Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 130 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about when and how to use cache item removed callback delegate, reloading or refreshing cache automatically when cached data is removed. Let's understand that with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have this webform1.aspx where I have this grid view control and a few button controls and a label control. I also have this countries.xml file which has got list of country nodes and then each country has got ID name and continent um, you know XML elements. Now let's say when I click this button here load countries and cache that's when I want to load this XML data into this grid view control. But then I also want to cache the data set. And we have discussed about doing that in many sessions in the previous uh, uh, videos on, on caching. If you haven't watched those videos, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. Okay, And just to speed things up, I have that code already typed in. So if you look at this, all we are doing here is creating an instance of a data set object. And we are using the read XML method of the data set to read the contents of this XML file and then load them into this data set which is then cached using the cache objects insert method. We have also discussed about all these parameters in the previous sessions on caching. Okay, And then once we have the data set cached, we are setting the data set as the data source for the grid view control, invoke data bind, computing the number of rows in the data set table and, and then displaying that as a message in the label control. Pretty straightforward. The important thing to notice here is that for the last parameter, which is you know, cache item removed callback, you know, parameter. That's a delegate. For this parameter, all this while we have been passing now. In this video, we'll discuss about what is this cache item removed callback delegate all about and how to use it. Okay, so obviously this is a delegate and we have discussed about delegates extensively in C-sharp video tutorial. So if you're new to delegates, I would strongly encourage you to watch those videos first. Okay, so obviously we have to pass an instance of this delegate as an argument to this parameter. And to do that, we need to create an instance of that delegate. So let's go ahead and do that. So cache item removed callback delegate. And I'm going to call this on cache item removed callback. So on cache item removed is equal to, I'm going to create a new instance of that delegate. And then look at this, whenever we create an instance of a delegate to the constructor of that delegate, we need to pass in a function name. Can I pass in any function name? No, you can only pass in a function name whose signature matches with the signature of this delegate. Okay, that's why delegates are called types of function pointers. Okay, now the easiest way to create a function whose signature matches with the signature of the delegate is, you know, I can simply right click on the delegate, go to definition. So I can see the delegate, uh, you know, declaration there. So this delegate has got a void written type and two parameters, key and, you know, uh, I mean, of type string and object, object and then cache item removed reason. Okay, so basically, I can simply copy this and then paste that in my code behind file and then I can simply get rid of this delegate keyword and then the semicolon at the end. So now I have a function whose signature matches with that of the delegate and I'm going to go call this function as you know cache item removed callback method. So whenever a cache item is removed you know that's when this delegate is going to be invoked which is pointing, which will be pointing to this function. So this function will automatically be called whenever the cache item is removed. So to this, to the constructor of this delegate, I am going to pass in the name of this function. Okay. So at the moment, what we have done, we have created an instance of the delegate to the constructor. We have passed in the name of this function, and then I am going to pass the instance of this delegate as an argument to this cache item removed callback. Uh, parameter of the insert method. Okay, so we are hooked up. I know we have hooked up everything. Whenever this uh, item is cached, you know we are also passing that instance of the delegate, which is pointing to this function. So obviously, when this data set is removed from the cache, then what's going to happen? This method will automatically be executed. That is the whole purpose of this cache item removed callback delegate. So this this cache item removed callback delegate can be used to you know define a method that we want to have executed automatically when that cache item is removed. 
okay so whenever this cache item is removed it will notify the application and then this this delegate which is pointing to this function will be invoked and then that delegate in turn will invoke this function okay so here in this function we can do a variety of things now what I basically want to do is whenever the item is removed from cache you know look at this into this function we are getting three parameters the key of the item which is removed its value and the reason it is removed and keep in mind an item may be removed from cache for three different reasons the cache duration has expired so it gets removed or we can explicitly remove that using remove method of the cache object or the dependency of the cache object has changed you know that's another reason why the item could be removed so whatever is the reason we can we get that reason into this reason object we also get the value if we want and the key now let's say whenever you know a cache item is removed I want to store that message in another cache variable is that possible absolutely so let's see how to do that and again I have this code already typed so let me copy that and paste it in this function so if you look at that, that's straightforward. Again, what are we doing? We are creating a variable of type string, data to store, and then this is hard-coded string. Cache, cache item with key is equal to whatever is the key is no longer present, and the reason is equal to reason dot two string. So I'm converting this reason object into its string representation using the two string method, and then I'm using this message. Uh, I mean, I'm basically storing that message in another cache variable called cache status okay so pretty simple and straightforward alright so when I click this button get countries from cache what should happen I obviously I want to get the data from cache and then display it in the grid view control again that's pretty straightforward we have discussed about this uh, many times as well in the previous session so I'm just going to copy and paste that there so what are we doing we are checking if countries data is not null if not null load that into a data set which is then set as the data source for the grid view control, invoke data bind, compute the number of rows in that data set, and then um, append that to this message, rows retrieved from cache. So since we are retrieving from cache, that's what we are displaying there. If the cache um, data set is not present, then what are we saying? Cache item with key countries data is not present in cache. So pretty simple and straightforward there. And then what else we have? So when I click this button, remove cache item, I want to explicitly remove the item from the cache so I'm going to use the cache objects remove method so cache dot remove and I want to remove the item uh, with key countries data so I'm going to pass that to this method and that's it that's going to remove that and then finally I have get cache status button so what is this button I mean when I click this button what should happen again we want to retrieve the status of the cache you know so let me copy this and paste it and then we'll go through the code so what are we doing if in the cache there is an item with key countries data then we are saying cache item with key countries data is still present in cache if our countries data is there if not then we are checking cache of status okay so what are we doing um, cache status you know we're retrieving the whatever message that we stored in that variable uh, in that cache key and then displaying that in the label okay um, on the other hand if there is nothing then maybe I just want to say you know an empty string so that we know what's happening there that means uh, both of these are not present uh, if else probably I want to take this and move into else if there get rid of this if and then else if if both of these keys are present is not present then I'm simply saying an empty text okay so pretty simple so far so let me go ahead and run this so what did we do um, we just specified you know the new thing here is that we created an instance of cache item removed callback delegate which is pointing to this function and then we pass that as a parameter to the insert method of the cache object okay so obviously when I click this button we should be able to load that XML data into the grid view control and it would have been cached so when I say get countries from cache look at that five rows retrieved from cache 
Now when I say get cache status, cache item with key is equal to, I mean key country's data is still present in cache. And remember, we're caching that for 60 seconds using the absolute expiration. So when I say get countries from cache, so five rows retrieved from cache, so that 60 seconds is not passed yet. So when I say get cache, uh, get cache status, you know, it's still present in the cache. So five rows retrieved from cache. So that product's data set is going to remain in the cache for the next 60 seconds. When that 60 seconds has expired, when I click on this get cache status, you know, we should get a message, uh, whatever we are storing in that cache status variable. Because remember, when 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 the cache item expires you know this delegate will be notified which is pointing to this function and in this function what are we doing we are building this message and storing it in this variable so i'm just waiting for it to complete those 60 seconds look at that cache item with key is equal to country's data is no longer present reason is equal to expired pretty simple and straightforward on the other hand let's load the data again into data set so we have loaded that five rows retrieved from xml get countries from cache, so it's present in cache, um, get cache status, cache item with key is still present. Now I'm removing it explicitly. When I click this button, it's going to be removed. Now when I say get cache status, look at that, cache item with countries data is no longer present and the reason is removed. We have removed that explicitly. Okay. On the other hand, look at that, let me load this again. Look at this now, India, that's present in Asia, Asia 1 continent. Okay, now when I say get countries from cache, so five rows retrieved from cache. Now let me change the dependency of this cache object. So that is this file. Now let me change that Asia 1 back to Asia, save the file. Now as soon as the dependency has changed, it would have removed that data set from the cache object. So when I say get cache status, look at that. Cache item with key is equal to countries data is no longer present and the reason is dependency changed. Okay, so pretty simple. So whenever the cache item is removed, you know, this method is getting executed. Now look at this, what are we doing here? We're actually storing this message into a cache, into another cache, uh, you know, key. Now, can I store this message into a database table if I want to? Absolutely, all you need to do is instead of storing that in, a, in another cache variable, put some ADO.NET code there. Okay, and I have that as well. So I have simple ADO.NET code here. Let me copy that and paste it there. So if you look at this code, what it's doing, it's reading the connection string from web.config file, which points to my local SQL Server installation here. I have this TBL audit log table, which has got this integer ID column. This is an identity column. And then an NBAC care message column. Okay, so let's say, you know, whenever the cache item is removed, I want to store that message into this database table. Now, since we have written that ADO.NET code here, it's going to insert that message into that database table. Let's see that in action. So let me close that and let me run the application once again. So again, you know, these are a few simple lines of ADO.NET code. We have discussed about ADO.NET in a great detail in ADO.NET video tutorial. So if you're new to that, I would strongly encourage you to watch uh, ADO.NET video tutorial. So load countries and cache, it should be present in the cache. When I say remove cache item, it should have been removed. Now in ADO.NET code, what we are doing, we are storing that message into the database table. So if I come here and then execute that select statement, look at that, um, the message is stored in the table and the reason is removed. Okay, so now is it possible whenever the cache item you know, has expired, is it possible to automatically reload uh, you know, the data into cache. Okay, absolutely, it's possible as well. All you need to do is you need to, you know, write that uh, code to recache data from the XML file. For example, let's say here, this cache is dependent on this XML file. Whenever somebody changes that XML file for any reason, maybe new countries are added or there were some errors and, and the file is corrected, whenever that happens, whenever the dependency has changed, I want to remove the item that is there which will automatically be done by this cache dependency. But then once it is removed, I want to reload this data as well, the new data into cache object. Okay, that can be done very easily. All you need to do is, you know, your, um, you know, the code to cache the data set, you know, put that code here, 
that's it so instead of this code I'm going to copy the code to cache the data set and put it in that callback method so here I'm, I'm, I'm copying and pasting that I can even get rid of this because I'm not going to use this variable anywhere so if you look at that what are we doing we're creating an instance of the data set we are reading that from the XML and then obviously another instance of cache item removed callback delegate and then we are inserting the data set using the insert method of the cache object okay so now whenever the cache item is removed for any reason it's going to reload that immediately again because in that callback method we have that code to do so so let me run this now and when the web form loads so load countries and cache we cached that get countries from cache so five rows retrieved from cache now let's say somebody changed this chaina to chaina1 for example so chaina's name has been named to chaina1 I save that file and look at this when I say get countries from cache I get that straight away I don't have to reload it because why whenever that dependency has changed you know obviously the item is removed from cache when that happens this delegate is notified okay so that delegate is pointing to this function cache item removed callback function and this function what it is doing it is reading again from that XML file and recaching that so we are able to automatically reload or refresh the cache when the cache item is removed and whatever may be the reason the item is removed uh, we are able to recache it so obviously when and how to use cache item removed callback delegate when I cached item is removed from cache cached item removed callback delegate can be used to specify a callback method for notifying our application so this callback method can be used as an opportunity for us to decide what we want to do when cache item is removed for example store the information about removed cache item in another cache object store information about that in a database table or reload data into cache and we have seen all all three things in a demo now an item may be removed automatically from cache when any of the following is true the cache item has expired the cache is uh, full or the cache you know there's a cache dependency and the item uh, that the cache object is dependent on has changed or we can also explicitly remove that item from cache on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.